Hey folks, my name is Eric from Support Adventure, and we wanted to tell you about Eastern Europe as a digital nomad. With me today is Tal. How's it going, Tal? Hey, it's good. How are you? I'm doing pretty fantastic, and I'm sitting right now in Belgrade, Serbia, and um, you are in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm in Chiang Mai for a few more days, and then I'm flying off to Sri Lanka. Cool. Well, um, we both have uh, spent a lot of time in Eastern Europe and explored lots of different vibrant places around it. We wanted to share that with the uh, Support Adventure YouTube channel audience and our Facebook page. And so let's, uh, without further ado, open up the map of Eastern Europe. Now, here we are. This is uh, the city of Belgrade. This is what I consider the mothership of Eastern Europeans. Um, and... Um, yeah, located in southeastern Europe in the country of Serbia, which is kind of like a, a center of this whole um, Western Balkan region, including all the former Yugoslav republics. Belgrade is the metropolis that put it all together. So the first one I want to talk about is Serbia and Belgrade. So this is a really great region for digital nomads, um, for just for the hospitality of the people is one thing. People are very nice and friendly and friendly to foreigners who just rock in here no matter where they're from. And it's, it's very friendly and you will find no shortage of people on platforms like Couchsurfing or Facebook groups like the Belgrade Foreign Visitors Club um, who will be willing to meet with you and socialize in English. And the level of English is really great in this region. And... The other thing is it's outside of the Schengen zone. So if you have, for example, an Australian or a Canadian or an American passport or some other passport that um, you know only has a limited amount of time in this huge uh, European Union Schengen slash Schengen area of the uh, European continent, which makes up you know most of all of the Western part of Europe and except for the UK and um, a lot of the Central Eastern Europe countries like Poland, Slovakia. So if you want to be outside of that, come to Serbia and you get 90 days visa free with um, like um, most Western passports. And um, yeah, and you, know, you escape the crowds as well. Uh, Serbia doesn't have nearly as much tourists as places like Hungary or Austria or Croatia. That's so right. Was, yeah. Yeah. And um, interesting to note as well, if you happen to be a holder of a passport from uh, Russia or China or India, you can also come to Serbia or Indonesia even. You can also come to Serbia without a visa. So that's my favorite of all time, Belgrade. It's a vibrant European capital with a touch of Mediterranean culture. And it's just a great place to be. Let's talk about other places in the region. So Romania is a really fun country as well. Timisoara is a really cute city, um, also very close to Belgrade, um, with a similar cost of living and all that stuff. And my favorite in Romania is actually called Klujna Poca. Klujna Poca is a nice city in Transylvania. So think, you know, nice people, not Dracula. <laughs> but it is in Transylvania. And basically, yeah, it's good things. I've heard, I've never been to Brasov or, or um, you know, Krajova or any of those other places. I've been to Bucharest. I wasn't that big of a fan of Bucharest. Um, it had too much of an impersonal big city, former communist vibe, but definitely Timisoara and Cluj Napoca are wins for Romania. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Sofia, Bulgaria. Sofia, Bulgaria is, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool city. It is in the European Union. It's perhaps not as developed um, as Belgrade um, in terms of um, social life and cafes and stuff, but it is cool. And, you know, that might be counterintuitive that it's less developed in Belgrade because it's in the European Union and Serbia isn't. But it's also one of those countries, Romania and, and Bulgaria are also countries that are not part of the Schengen zone, as well as um, Croatia is part of the European Union, but not the Schengen zone. So if you need to escape the 90 day rule in the Schengen zone for 90 days, come to Croatia, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, Bosnia. I mean, there's an endless supply of countries that you could just visit. Montenegro. Oh, such a darling of a country. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So basically, let's move on to the coast. The coast, which um, which the, this region can boast, is Croatia. 
Croatia is a very sort of like, as you look, it's right across the, the little Adriatic Sea um, from Italy. So there's a heavy influence of Italian Mediterranean culture, Italian food and all that stuff. But they do speak the same language as Serbia, several Croatian language, slight differences, but very slight. I would say that, yeah, basically Croatia is the most touristy of the region and thus you'll be paying the most money and for the least amount of space or quality, I suppose. Well, the quality of the food will be great, but in terms of the accommodation, it will be more expensive. But if you want that sort of Adriatic Mediterranean vibe, I would recommend you check out Montenegro. There was this town I went on a trip with my parents a few years ago called Herzegnovi. It was absolutely wonderful, not overcrowded with tourists. I would say the best, if you want to go to the coast, the best months to go are May and September. May and September. Um, because it's before all of the tourists come from everywhere else. Um, yeah, I mean, cities like Dubrovnik will always have lots of tourists because, you know, it's a port, I think, and, you know, whatever, there's lots of German tourists with cameras and Japanese tourists and, you know, tourists from whoever knows where. Um, and, but Montenegro is still the more, um, less touched, I wouldn't say untouched, but much less touched um, alternative. I heard Herzog Novi, I've been there, and I heard a place called, um, over here, um, there's a really nice place down by the uh, the Albanian border is Boyana Island, um, which is a place where you have a lot of alternative culture, where a lot of the artists and stuff from Belgrade go for their summer holidays. So keep that in mind. So yeah, May, September, early June, great time to hit the Adriatic coast. And even Bosnia has a little bit of coast. I've never been there. It sounds really funny that <laughs> I managed to get a little strip of coast, but but nothing in terms of land disputes and claims to property, nothing's impossible in the Balkans. <laughs> yeah, so Mostar, nice little small town with a historic bridge. But Sarajevo is the place. It's one of those places where you feel this uh, mixing of cultures that, the, cultures that the Balkans is famous for, probably in the most noticeable in historic way. Sarajevo is a place where you see one neighborhood is completely Turkish looking, one neighborhood is completely Austrian looking, and it's all weaved together in a very elegant South European Slavic culture. So let's go on into Central Europe. Budapest. Tal, what do you think of Budapest? How do you like it? Uh, Budapest is okay. I mean, it's beautiful. It's really nice as a tourist, but in terms of living there, there's a lot of people, a lot of tourists there. I find the Hungarians are very nice, but from a distance, they're not as open to kind of mingling with the tourists there. So it's definitely good to be in a bubble there, but you're not going to get a lot of uh, the local Hungarian vibes. Uh, yeah. It's a little more expensive than all the previous regions we we're talking about, but it's much cheaper than Western Europe and the, than the Paris, the Rome, the London's. Yeah. Um, Budapest is charming. It's beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful cities in Europe for the architecture. Definitely. But for li it's lacking that life that I love of the Balkans, for example. So it's I would like base myself outward, there. Yeah, the outward, yeah outward but I would visit. Yeah, friendliness. Yeah, it's good to visit on a Budapest, Vienna, Prague, and Bratislava kind of route, you know, the tourist route. It's, it's a good stop. Yeah, and if you want a little uh, place for the summer or whatever, Lake Balaton is a sort of resort... Um, place where Hungarians go to unwind in their landlocked country. They've got this lake. There's all the different places where you can stop on there. You might want to check it out. All right. Up we go to uh, Slovakia, Bratislava. Bratislava is actually the city where my grandparents on my father's side of my family are from. It's a cute little town, very European unionized, um, but also Slovakia is a country that does its own thing, but people tend to speak English fairly well not overly friendly or not overly unfriendly. It depends who you meet, depends who you talk to. Um, I, I would recommend um, a few places to check out there, um, like uh, Kutsa Dunai, which is this yeah, club there where I've played many times. It's a culture center. Um, if you want Slovak food, you go on to Obhodna Street and you go to, what's it called? Where is Slovak pub? or there's another one there. Anyways, check out Bratislava. It's worth a few days or up to a week, but it's got a sleepy vibe unless you find awesome parties, which do happen in Bratislava. You just need to get on couchsurfing.com, meet some local people, and let them show you around. 
Yeah, really good, well-connected airport as well. So if you need to fly yeah. around Europe, flying from mention, Bratislava or Budapest or Vienna is really cheap. Yeah, so the airports, yeah, Budapest airport is really well-connected. It's the hub of Wizz Air, which is actually a Hungarian company that has great flights from Eastern Europe to, um, you know, as far as, you know, like Georgia and Israel and all over Western Europe as well. And then Bratislava airport has lots of deals with Ryanair and such as, as well. And uh, Vienna airport is actually here around yeah there it is um vienna airport is here and it's actually on the way to bratislava so it's very easy to take a bus from one hour to bratislava to the vienna airport so essentially if you're in bratislava you have two airports i mean yeah for a digital nomad i don't think vienna has much to offer just since it's on the map i'll just not as much yeah because it's it's a little bit of a expensive uh sort of uh western european style city um despite being in the middle of Central Europe or even in the Eastern part of Central Europe. But yeah, um, other cities in Slovakia, well, definitely check out the Tatris in the winter for skiing. Really beautiful. Yeah. This is one of the most uh, untouched regions of, of mountainous terrain in, in, in Central Europe, definitely. And it's going to save you a lot of money versus the Alps if you go skiing in Austria. So check that out. Kolšica and Preshov, nice little towns. Um, not much to say about them, though. You might have a good time. Then, everybody knows about Prague. Prague is uh, the Central European, you know, expat capital, maybe the one with the most expats, or it's just a place where, you know, similar, it's the metropolis of the former Czechoslovakia region. So even people from Slovakia who want to make something of their life, be an artist, um, start a business, whatever, they move to Prague. Yeah. So Prague is the metropolis. Check it out. I would say that the locals, again, are not friendly or unfriendly, and you'll have to you know, spend some energy getting to know them, but there will be lots of expats in Prague as well. Yeah. I think Czech people are very nice, uh, more nicer outside of Prague, but because of all the tourism, it's hard to kind of, like, they just group you with all the tourists in Prague. But if you're in Brno or Ostrava, uh, Czech people are very nice, they're very friendly, they're very open, but yeah. you need to do an effort. You need to be the one that opens that conversation they're not gonna just yeah come but then they will be very friendly talking. invite you here and there and you know yeah. you'll meet lots of cool people once you start yeah. hanging around and with the right types of locals yeah and if if you do go to the czech republic there's a town called chesky krimlov which is at the south uh, over there, there. We go. Um, it's beautiful i highly recommend checking that out for maybe one or two days yeah. and there's also a beautiful mountain range called the chesky rai or in english it's the bohemian paradise and uh, that's beautiful as well. Some mountains, some nice hiking there. So you could check that out. In the yeah, Republic. but it's probably not going to conform with the um, preconceived ideas of Bohemian culture that uh, that uh, most Western people have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Bohemia yeah. is half of the Czech, Czech Republic. This Western part of the Czech, like involving Prague, that's called Bohemia. And, and the way that uh, the way that the word entered the English language was people from there moving to Paris, and and they were you know the Romani ethnic minority and they had this free way of living that led to this term bohemian entering the language right. anyways let's move on to poland one of my favorite countries in uh europe to visit is actually poland my favorite city would be have to have to be krakow so it has that sort of uh <clears throat> bohemian atmosphere uh in a western sense um that you would imagine especially in the old jewish quarter down um in the yeah down here kazimierz I think is that's how you pronounce it. But down here, it's full of awesome places to have a drink, witness culture, um, full of lots of history, and just a overall really great vibe for a city. Krakow, you guys want to visit it? Trust me, it's a great place, and you know, really affordable as well. Other little um, places in in Poland that I've I've been, Wrocław is a nice one. That's a really nice sort of modern Polish city with really friendly people. We have one contractor who lives there. Katowice was pretty cool, but kind of small. Um, Wuj is the creepiest city in Poland that I've been to. Um, if you if you like David Lynch movies, um, he's a big fan of the city. So check it out if you're into that. Uh, Poznan, I had some good conscience there when I was touring as a, as a band leader in Eric and the Worldly Savages at Club Dragon. Love it. Uh, the city also seems pretty cool as well. Uh, but check out Club Dragon. And the nicest city in Poland, Gdansk. 
Gdansk is part of um, this region, three cities, Gdansk, Sopot, and Gdynia, which are kind of forming this uh, Baltic sort of coastline of Poland. And Gdansk is one of the nicest cities uh, I have ever seen in Central Europe. I mean, if you just, if we drop ourselves here, honestly, anywhere here, you just can see what kind of quality of architecture and urban, urban planning that you have here. I mean, it's, this is as beautiful as Amsterdam. And in fact, the in, influence of uh, Dutch traders is felt in the architecture. And they've just done a really good job at making this nice city center beautiful. And I went there last year and the year before. I'll probably go again this year in 2020 because it was just such a nice place to be, very convenient, walkable. I got an Airbnb in the center and everybody was really awesome. And in Poland, no problem speaking English. It's one of the best places to speak English, especially since so many people from Poland went to live in England and now are moving back because there's more opportunity now in Poland than there is in England. All right, honorable mention to Warsaw, the capital, which, well, I've had some of the greatest parties in my life there as a DJ and singer, and it's a good place, but it's a little bit of that big city vibe, uh, massive uh, skyscraper architecture. It's got a small old town, which is nice, but I wouldn't say that uh, for what we're looking for, what me and Tao like, um, it would be the best place as a digital nomad. Yeah, well, I do love Warsaw, though. I think Warsaw yeah. is my favorite city in, really? in Poland, and it's Tell a very unpopular it. opinion. Well, okay. because... Uh, Warsaw, it, I mean, it was completely destroyed in the Second World War, but they rebuilt it on the plans of what it used to be in the old place. So it's really cool to see this rebuilt old town. People are super nice. I found them a lot nicer, I mean, in my experience than in Krakow. The parties are awesome. You know, you can go yes. anywhere. People are so friendly. Uh, and it had this very modern feel, but it was very cheap. It was even cheaper than, than Krakow, and yeah. it was beautiful. Like I, I really like. Uh, I mean, some people town. love. Some people hate the uh, Palace of Culture and Science, which is this old like Lenin. I love that building. Skyscraper. I think it's really cool. I, um, I love that thing, man. What's it yeah. called again? Uh, uh, the uh, Palace of of Science and Culture, I think. Where is it? Okay. Uh, yeah. You guys can check it out. Uh, uh, or let's just Google it. Science. Culture Warsaw. Here we go. Bam. There we go. That thing. So it looks like beautiful. something that should be in New York City or something. Yeah. Like like it looks like it was built at the same time as the Empire. Oh, here's it lit up. Oh wow. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Warsaw. All right. Go to the saw. Yeah. Saw your liver off at the Warsaw. Yeah. Um all right. We're in your territory, Belarus. Come on, Tal. We already Belarus. I mean, I would recommend going to Belarus for five days, one week as a tourist. It's definitely not a place you want to be a digital nomad and work remotely out of, unless you are Belarusian and already living there and based there. Uh, but it's a very interesting kind of city to see this really interesting old Soviet culture that's slowly transforming into a more modern metropolis. It's very uh, clean. Well, very clean. Well, like maintained. sterile, how clean it is. Yeah, it's sterile because, yeah, they, yep, yep, I guess, um, you know, yeah, so, yeah, it's like you can't even find a cigarette on the ground anywhere clean. That's how clean it yeah. is. But it's cool. It's, I, I had a good time there. Um, you spent a little longer. I spent eight days there. You spent a month. So I, I, I'm getting the feeling like you got a little bored there for a month. Um, yeah. But, I did get bored there. Uh, I met incredible people, but yeah, there's not much. I mean, after five days, you see everything, and then you just redo the same thing over and over and over again. But it's a very green city as well. It is, yeah. There's a lot here. to see. It's really bike-friendly as well. There's a lot of nice bike paths. Uh, if you're into that, it's a good city for that. Yep, cool. Um, yep, definitely. A, it's a, it's, it's kind of a outlier on the whole central eastern europe for how organized and clean it is if you're looking for that if you're looking for a discount switzerland this might be an option <laughs> yeah um i haven't been to these countries up here have you tell i've been to latvia uh yeah. riga is beautiful i think it's one of the most beautiful cities i've been in all of europe and i didn't expect that when i went there it has this beautiful neoclassic architecture everywhere and there's so much detail in all of the buildings in the central part um i haven't spent too much time there i was just there for around uh two days yep. so i'm planning to go back to the baltic region but in the summer maybe super in the summer for sure yeah you don't want to go there in the winter but i nope. think this is an incredibly beautiful city uh cool Riga. 
and uh, it's a very interesting culture of you know a lot of Latvian, a lot of Russian, and a lot of international English all mixing together in the city. So I recommend checking out the Baltic region. I'm probably going to go to Vilnius and Tallinn this year as well because Tallinn, I'm very Tallinn? curious. You're going to Tallinn, Tallinn. Tallinn. Yeah. Tell from Support Adventure in Tallinn. Yeah, but they're on the Show Euro. They're talent. part of the. Yeah. All these countries, the Euro, they're part of the Eurozone. Uh, very EUized. European Union. Very yeah. Euro, Euro, Europeanized. Yeah, and Estonia has a, a e-residency program, and they have a digital nomad visa. So if you want a place to pay cheap taxes, or no, just, you if know, you want to pay a place to, to get, if you want a place to pay European level of taxes, well, while not actually getting a, a any right to live anywhere, then then Estonia is a good option. Yeah. I guess. But <laughs> There's it's, it's lots cool of what they're options. doing, though. It, yeah. I think it's interesting what they're doing. And as time I joined goes that on, program, see. way too much compliance stuff, way too much. Uh, anyways, yeah. I, well, I, you know about it more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we'll do a separate video about that. Maybe. Potentially. I don't have much to say. It wasn't that great. Okay. Um, just Google it. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Ukraine. This is a yeah. place that you want to you wanna understand Ukraine. All right, so things you need to understand about Ukraine. It is sort of, even the name Ukraine, Ukraine, that means like the border regions, right? And I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, 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 Ukraine. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, oh, Woo. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, it is the border between essentially the Russian, so former Soviet world and the, the rest of the European EU happy land. So what you need to understand is it's a huge country with, um, it's the biggest country in continental Europe. Look, it's bigger than France, bigger than Germany, bigger than the United Kingdom. Look at this, it's massive. And it's, it's um, got a lot of space there. So we'll start with the gateway to Ukraine. If you're coming from Krakow, you'll take a, well, back when I used to do this, I don't know if it's so thing, you take a train to this city, Zreshov, or and then you take a bus to the border, then you walk across the border, then you take a bus to Lviv. All, all in all, it takes about five hours. Those were the days, and, and there's, you know, yeah, it's a fun border. I won't spoil it for you. Um, yeah, and Lviv has a super cheap airport, too. A lot of really cheap flights. I flew from Berlin to Lviv for, I think, 10 euros. There you go, euros. yeah. And it, this has that, um, it's part of the former Austro-Hungarian uh, Empire, so you can really see that. Let's land ourselves in the main square here. From the architecture, look at this. It feels very Polish as well in the architecture. Yes, it, it was a Polish-dominated city in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I got an Airbnb, which was, uh, hold on, where was it? Right, it was, I think, in this building here, or one of these buildings here, but right on the main square here. Oh, wait, no, it was over here. My Airbnb, actually I got it on booking.com, was in this building here, a whole studio apartment for like 30 euros a day. Um, where do you get that in the main square of a European city for 30 euros a day? Lviv, Ukraine, that's the place. So check it out. Um, lots of cool bars, cool cafe culture, um, artistic sort of vibe to the city, walking around. It's kind of run, run down, Puzata Hata. That's a oh, good yeah. place to get the deli style, um, sort of like, uh, or no, cafeteria style food where you, get to choose, you see the stuff, you pull it, they serve it to you, you have a tray of things, they add up the total, and you take it to your table and have a full belly, which is what I believe the name means. Somebody told me that. Um, yeah, so Lviv is a great place, super affordable in accommodation, food, transportation, costs nothing, very walkable, get a place somewhere in this yellow zone here, you will not be sorry, you'll have a good time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's small. It's nice for a week or two. Uh, I wouldn't spend too much time there, uh, like in terms of the long term living, but it's very cute. It's very nice. There's a lot to do uh, for a week or two. Yep, exactly. And then you'll get on to the, the bigger and more majestic capital of uh, Kiev. Tell me yeah. about it, Tal. I mean, it's not like, um, it's not the place that like I, I've been there the last couple of years. It's, it's cool, but I don't find it's, it's that friendly. What, what, change my mind i i really really love it i think kiev is this very international city but also very ukrainian and uh 
you know, in the sense that uh, what I don't like, I'm going to start with what I don't like about it. It's not very walkable. So there's Podil, which is up there near the, near the pier, near the river. And then there's the center, which is where it says Kiev, and that is called the Maidan area. Yeah. And then there's some other areas here and there. So that you, you can take a metro to get between the two, but it's not the most, it's not like Belgrade where you can walk everywhere. Here's, what here's I love, Maidan. Let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, Maidan is, is nice. It's beautiful. But what I like, the... Uh, you know, coming from Belarus, Belarus, it felt quite sterile. Everything was planned. But Kiev, it felt like it, people were living. People were free. People were doing really cool, exciting things. There's a lot of driven uh, Ukrainians there that have a startup culture. They're creating companies. They're, you know, doing a lot in the tech space as well. So that's up and coming. Uh, because of the size of the city, you can find so much different food. You can find so much different parties, different atmospheres. And there's a really cool expat scene as well. So when I was there in the summer, I met people from all over the world that came there and that, uh, you know, uh, wanted to co-work, co-live and check out the different uh, cultural sites, things like that. Um, for me personally, I speak Russian. So I also made a lot of Ukrainian friends where I spoke Russian. So I think I had a little bit of benefit to the average uh, person traveling there because although Ukrainian is the official language of Ukraine, a lot of people do also speak Russian. It's there. the main language so of Kiev historically, actually. It is correct. Yeah. Um, so, so that's yeah. why I liked it. Yeah. So as, as you can see, like, um, this is the, the, the cool neighborhood Padil of, uh, of Kiev and it's, I, I like it, but I mean, when you compare that vibe, you just looking at the vibe on the street and you compare it to, sort of the cool parts of uh, Serbia, uh, Belgrade, it doesn't have the same sort of, uh, let's say, Central European flair. I mean, maybe you'll say, yeah, it looks the same, Eric. It's just run down buildings, all the same. But if you look at Belgrade, it has a little bit more art, a little bit more greenery, a little bit more patio culture, a little bit more um, stuff happening on the streets. But I, I really, yeah, Kiev's got a cool vibe as well, and you can meet lots of cool people there. So, um, what's your favorite? What, what's your favorite neighborhood to stay in in uh, Kiev? Because from you know Vrachar, yeah. Dor Dorchol in Belgrade, what's what's your favorite? Um, I would say Podil if you could afford it. So, yeah. although Ukraine is very very cheap country, accommodation in Kiev is very expensive for whatever reason. So, for I was Podil, staying yeah. near the train station. Nothing too exciting the train going station on. Station is. Right here it's it near is. Near Olympia. Uh, not much going on there at Let's all. Let's see what that neighborhood looks like. Come on. It looks oh, where same. I was staying. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's a lot of new developments where I was. There's a lot of like tall new buildings opening up, stuff like that. They've got a different um, sort of feeling about colors there. They just mash them all together in a weird way. Yeah. Anyways. Um, Maybe it's I would the flag say is stay, this yellow. Yeah. Yeah, stay in Podil or stay near Maidan. If you can afford it, and if not, then stay anywhere be uh, along the uh, metro line because you could just jump in the metro, pay I think thirty cents. Yeah, it's anywhere. a very efficient and cheap metro system. Um, okay, so Moscow, any any? Oh, one one last thing. Uh, Odessa is really nice in oh, Ukraine as well. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. You don't want to hey, skip that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. So Odessa is good for for I'd say three things: going to the beach, partying or seeing this mix of Jewish and Soviet and even Western European architecture all melting pot. So a lot of scholars went to Adista uh, and built all these beautiful buildings and all this kind of thing. I think Adista was the culture, was the a hub of, of culture and of uh, intellectual kind of uh, people in the past, maybe a little less so today, but it's really cool to walk around the historic part of the city uh, and it's right on the on the Black Sea, so you can go to the beach, which is really nice in the summer. Yeah. Um, I like Odessa, yeah, but I, I found it a little bit boring. I was there for two weeks, but if you like partying, you won't be bored there. Yeah. Okay. So, anything to say about Moscow? Um, Moscow is cool. I mean, as a digital nomad, I don't think it's the best place as well. It's a little bit more expensive than the expensive. rest of the places. Expensive. Yeah. It's also too big it's I, th too I heard big, good I things think. about st petersburg but i haven't been there i don't, don't think i haven't been that. either i'd love to go i hear it's i i hear st petersburg is a lot more european in feeling and moscow is a lot more let's say socialist in feel or not socialist i like guess like yeah. russian let's say um i yeah i don't know i i 
think I would like St. Petersburg, but I haven't been there. Okay, what well, what have we not done? Um, last week I was in Athens, Greece. That was a cool place, but again, a little bit more expensive, I think. Um, <clears throat> more of a you know, Western European budget. You know, you're paying three euros fifty for a cup of tea in a bar or whatever, or like a yeah, whatever. Athens is cool though. It's got a lot to offer, and the weather is a little bit warmer than the rest. Um, so you know, it could be a good place for March, I suppose, when it starts to get warm, April because it's down there, down south. And um, I wanted to mention we missed uh, Slovenia. Yeah. What do you have to say about Slovenia? Slovenia is very nice. It's very Austro-Hungarian in the feeling. Uh, I would say, it, although it's in Central Europe, it has more of a Western European vibe, or at least they're trying to kind of present that. Uh, I think it's, it's very bikeable. It's very flat. It's, or, or the city is very flat. I mean, it's in the Alps. It's surrounded by mountains, so it's not that flat, actually. But it's it's beautiful. It's really well maintained. It's really nice. Uh, I have some friends there, so they kind of showed me the social side of of it from a local's perspective. And there's some parties. It's kind of good. I mean, it's no Belgrade. I think it's cute. It's nice. It doesn't offer as much as other bigger cities nearby do. For example, Belgrade or even you know the other capitals nearby Slovenia. Yeah. But if you like nature. It's beautiful nature near uh, Ljubljana. So you can go to Lake Bled. That's one of the most beautiful lakes in all of Europe, I think. Uh, the Alps are right there. You can go to the Austrian Alps or the Italian Alps or even just stay in the Slovenian Alps. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. And it's a, little, it's a lot more expensive, I would say, than the rest of the region. It's cheaper than Austria, but it's a Maybe. lot more expensive than Croatia or Hungary. Well, the coast of Croatia is pretty expensive too, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess I'm comparing the Oh, yeah, Zagreb. Zagreb what about, yeah, Zagreb's fair. Right. Zagreb is nice. Uh, Zagreb is very beautiful, I think. Very classical Austro-Hungarian architecture. Prices are cheaper than Slovenia, but more expensive than the other capitals. If you go... Uh, yeah, actually, it's like a bit cheaper than Slovenia, maybe. It's much cheaper than the coast. Going to Zagreb is much cheaper than the coast. And I liked it. It's cool. I think it's a little boring if you compare it to uh, to Belgrade, but I mean it's nice for a few days. It's, I think it's really beautiful yeah. from a class, classical European perspective. Okay, I'm gonna end this video by talking about yeah. Istanbul, because if you want a city that's a true metropolis on the level of like a New York City or a London or something like that, that has a bustling. Uh, atmosphere tons of stuff going on lots of good parties and stuff to go to yet still affordable i think istanbul is one of the best options actually um i was there you know just 10 days ago and it's great it's a really cool cool thing um the area of taksim uh is pretty cool at uh, this whole istakal street all the way from taksim square all the way to like the end here and over the bridge here there's a Awesome spot. It's one of the best places for food. I mean, these, um, like in Ukraine, they have these uh, cafeteria style places. And, you know, there's just lots of them everywhere where you can get amazing food. People are fairly friendly. Um, and it's just got this worldly vibe to it. One of the best in the world. The other place I went was, uh, I think it was here. Somewhere. Where was it? <laughs> no, here. Over here, in this neighborhood here, there were some cool bars as well. Um, Kadokoi, or whatever it's called. Um, and you know, it's really the one, look at this place, like between- it's massive. Between the Middle East and Europe, there's a city called Istanbul, which fully and thoroughly embraces both lifestyles. And, and well, if you haven't seen it, go and see it. And I'd say from, like, I felt like, I was there for two days, about 10 days ago, and I felt like two days is not enough to see anything. So this would be a place to spend a month, I think. This would be a place to spend a month. And the e-visa is really easy to get online. I got it like two days before I went and it came in immediately into my inbox uh, without any hassle. So there's your Europe, folks. There's your whole sort of thing. I'm sitting here in Belgrade and um, I'm about to fly next week from uh, Belgrade to Amsterdam to Ireland to Johannesburg to Cape Town, South Africa, where the Sport Adventure base is going to be. 
um, for most of February. I'll tell you about that after I've been there and uh, have some stuff to say about it. So yeah, this is your world. This is your planet. This is your Europe and Eastern Europe offers one of the best opportunities to live a high quality life with great people around you at a very affordable price. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, I'm going to Georgia soon, so maybe right. we can make another video about Georgia right. as well. Right, so this is, and on the other side of Turkey, there's this place called Georgia next to Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Russia. And this is a hotspot, yeah, honorable mention for the upcoming uh, Digital Nomad hotspot, which gives you a year visa free on arrival, and you can just rock up and live there. Apparently, it's very affordable, very nice, and it's an up-and-coming hub for digital nomads because they've done a very good PR and made a lot of people want to check it out. And um, we'll see in this year. Um, I'll probably be swinging in there for, what was it, the Nomad Summit in May? Yeah, in May, end of May, yeah. yeah. I'll be there as well. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you more about that place once we're there. I was there in 2013 the last time. It was less developed than it is now, I suppose. And uh, we'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, I think it's one of the most trending places of 2020 in the sense that uh, people haven't gone there a lot recently. But now every, uh, half of people here in Chiang Mai are planning to go there in May. So uh, I think it's really up and coming. Yeah, so... For um, digital nomads especially. Especially yeah. with the one-year visa. They're getting a lot of good press around that. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, support adventure. This is your world. Make the best of it. One planet, one mentality of the digital nomad traveling around the world from Africa to Latin America to Southeast Asia to Eastern Europe. This is support adventure. Support your adventure. For more info about us, subscribe to our channel. Go on our Facebook page and uh, apply to work with us. And Hopefully, we can help more and more people make their dreams come true of traveling the globe. Yeah, we now have people in 14 different countries around the world. So that's exciting and we're growing as well. So uh, yeah. maybe you'll be next. All right, and guys. Catch you later. Bye now.